Welcome to episode 256 of Ask Governor Productions and what is the final episode in this room? The first episode I filmed in this room was way back in August of 2017. It was episode 5 of the series. So the first four episodes I actually did in my old bedroom at my old house that we were in for like 15 years and then every episode since except for like a few like when I was at Rod's house or in a hotel with Michael and Sands like have been in this room. So it's pretty wild to end this this run here. When I first started doing episodes in this room, I literally filmed on a webcam. The mic sounded terrible. My biggest criticism, and again, this is a biased answer, is as a content creator of the LEGO products, I guess, um, I don't feel like there's enough outreach from the LEGO group to the other content creators and like communication there. And as you can see, the questions on the screen, I, I don't know why I was looking back at this. I made them huge. Like it's like covering up my chin. It's ridiculous. And I guess as soon as I moved into this house, I just stuffed tons of stuff onto my shelves. I mean, you can see ships just thrown about on top of each other. And uh, clearly that was never going to work. I'm in a really good place now, but unfortunately it's gonna be moving obviously, but I thinned out my shelves and it looks so much better than it did. Anyway, first question comes from DX and he says, it would be really cool if you tracked down and reviewed a rare variant of the new 501st battle pack, where on the front of the box, the clones are shown with purple markings and visors. They are not physically purple, inside are just the regular clones, but it's still a crazy thing to have in a serious Star Wars collection. So I certainly wouldn't make a review about a slightly different box, although I can see why you would think that's exactly the type of thing I would do as a Lego Star Wars fan. I, I get it, I do some weird things. Um, I, I do specifically collect some odd Lego Star Wars boxes, more specifically the small boxes. I have gotten quite a few emails and messages about this sort of thing recently, both on this set and I think on the Republic fighter tank, there's been some weird coloring issues. A lot of people are finding darker boxes in some cases. So this whole thing with like Lego Star Wars boxes and the colors of them getting mixed up has become very prominent, I think, over the last six months. It definitely has been happening a lot recently. And, you know, I think there's some experts out there on Reddit that said, like, especially with this file first, it was like, you know, the, the printer ran out of cyan or whatever color, you know? So that seems to be the case here. It's obviously not intentional that it's purple, but it is kind of cool. Honestly, if I saw one in the store, I'd probably just grab it to grab it, like, but otherwise I'm not gonna track them down. Roxy says, why don't we get minifigures with helmets? I feel like it would make them sell better. I was gonna give you the, the, the simple answer, and the obvious answer is helmet sets just aren't minifigure sets, and I, I get that because of Captain Rex and because of Commander Cody, it's a little more pertinent that you would want minifigures in your helmet sets, because now it would be a minifigure that would actually be something we haven't had in, in a decade or whatever, you know? When it's Boba Fett, when you get a Boba Fett every year, or Darth Vader or Stormtrooper, like, yeah, if we got a minifigure, it'd be neat, but like, who really cares? Ultimately, the minifigure just doesn't fit within the way those sets work. Lego at the end of the day does want the minifigure, I believe, not to be like the sole representation of Lego. So they do try to have some things that don't have minifigures and I respect that and I think that's okay, especially of all things with a helmet bust. It just minifigure doesn't fit, doesn't interact with the set at all and I think it's fine. Although if they include minifigs, I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing, I guess. I just, like, it's okay without them. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Animated Mike Studio says, what was your favorite video you filmed in your old room? Congrats on moving and love the channel. Thank you, Mike. But uh, yeah, favorite video I ever filmed in this room. I, I took a little trip down Nostalgia Road and I came to the one video. I don't think there was another video that even came close to this. You know, I've made a lot of good, fun videos Videos have gotten millions of views in this room and it's been an awesome, awesome five years here. The video I made a little over a year and a half ago with my buddy Sean called We Built a Lego Star Wars Clone Base, but it's 2011 is my favorite video I made in this room. It's a nostalgia trip for me personally. Um, I got to do it with one of my best friends from YouTube, my first friend from YouTube, Sean, TR Legos fan. I met him in 2009, mind you. And so it's like kind of surreal. And, and you know, you meet this person on the internet and now they're in your house and like you've, you know, you've met their family to, you know, it's kind of this whole thing. And it was a really fun experience when he was here for the three or four days. I think I probably had a vlog with him in it too at the time, but man, like we, I think that was a blast for, for both of us to just kind of have that throwback building experience. Now, to be fair, that is about the skill level that I still build at to this day. Sean has far surpassed uh, surpassed that era of building as far as skill level goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, like that's, that's a fun one and I will always look back fondly on that one. And maybe five or six years from now, I'll do something again similar to that when I'm feeling that nostalgia kick and I have the time and space to build a, a massive clone base but it's 2009 or something, you know. Chaos says, do you think they'll make more sets for Andor or the Bad Batch? I really want to- Amiga! But I'm not paying for the set with her in it. Unfortunately, you know, 
think you're going to have to. I, I don't see them fitting any of that into this year's summer wave. I mean, obviously 2024, 2025, there are years to come where that could happen if you want to wait for years to come. But as far as the immediate future being this year, I don't see any Bad Batch. I don't see any Andor fitting into the list. We have a pretty complete list of summer sets and uh, there, there's just not a lot of room. Although I will say, I think we talked about this uh, a few months ago. There's a trend with some of these sets. They're on eBay. You can buy them for like a hundred bucks. 150 bucks if you're the Luke's Landspeeder, you can save some money. I'm just saying, take a look around. If you're going to buy the Justifier or UCS Luke's Landspeeder, I don't know why, but those two specific sets are on eBay for way cheaper than I'll see them anywhere at a retail store. So, you know, if you're looking for one of those sets, that might be where you want to buy it. Isaiah says, what is your least favorite part about moving? I'm not enjoying at all, like, coordinating things. I got to sign up for like electricity, sewer service, water service. Uh, I have to figure out when the TV is going to get delivered. I got to sign up for the couch to get delivered at the right time on the right day. All the, all the like scheduling things I am thoroughly not enjoying. Han Solo says, what has been the best and or worst thing about your Lego setup in the old room? I suppose I'm going to extend this a little bit outside of just the Lego aspect of the setup, but everything I do in my room is because of the Lego setup, I guess. So that's what affects this specifically. So the worst thing I would say is my one closet door that I can't open all the way because of my nightstand and my PC where I set up my PC in here with my desk and everything. I just literally cannot move it any further to the left. So my, my one closet door doesn't open all the way. So anytime I want to get a white shirt, I have to like really reach in there and it gets a little bit difficult and sometimes they fall off and it's annoying. So if, I, if there's one thing that's the worst, it's that. The best thing, however, and the best way to think about this, I guess, is it's coming from my personal mindset and experience is that in my old bedroom, I had I was very close to outgrowing that space when we ended up moving to this house. And so when we moved to this house, this room is actually, I want to say about two feet deeper. And I, you know, it's just an, it's just a better layout as well for my, my, what I have for my videos and everything. But with that extra space, it really did allow me to like have the ability to have a table that comes off the wall have some depth between the table and the wall for reviews and i think that helped like make my videos have a better aesthetic and appeal like because i film my reviews like with the table just pushed up against the shelves like you're gonna get some really like dark contrasting shadows or something and it's gonna look really really bad but having that distance behind there and also like me being able to stand behind the table at times because if my room was like two feet smaller like it was in my old bedroom gonna have a problem i mean the bed takes up a lot of space your desk takes up a lot of space your computer and then you're not left with a whole lot else for shelving and table and everything so i really think just having the slightly larger room compared to the old room was a big difference and you know i don't know how many of you guys make content but like you know when you, whenever you're looking for like a place to live whether that be rent i mean obviously if you're with your parents and you're younger you don't have much of a choice in it i just got really fortunate that this is the place i had obviously no input on what they picked to live in my dad just wanted more like grassland i guess um uh, when we ended up moving and so this is just what i ended up with right but it worked out fantastically you know so i was really really happy with this and this room worked perfectly for the last five years i think the best thing about my setup is that it was about two feet bigger than the last one which obviously you don't have that reference for but i think you get the point shan says what color are your walls i have been utterly fascinated for years and wish to replicate the same color in my room. Well, I've always just called them tan, so I hope that helps. Uh, no, I'll ask my mom. So I was editing and I went to ask my mom what color the walls are, and she goes, in your room, ugly. So um, yeah, I don't I don't know the color of the, the wall. We didn't paint these walls. Um, these are the walls that, that were this color when we moved in five years ago. There's still little white splotches up on up on the wall above my bed that were here when I moved in. We just, like I did, I was like I don't need to paint my room. I think they painted my sister's room, my brother's room. Like I think every other room in this house has been painted except for mine. Also partially because I was like don't bother painting it. It's too much work. Like I don't want to have to take everything off. You don't want, you know like I'm like just I like I like the tan. It's good. J do 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 says what do you think about Lego adding random non-accurate features to sets? Example of the, of the baby on board sign on the UCS Razor Crest, but not having accurate features to some sets. So, look, when, when LEGO designers add fun things to sets like baby on board and the UCS Razor Crest, it's some of the best stuff you'll ever see in LEGO Star Wars. That's literally fun stuff. You, you can't get mad at that. I, I certainly wouldn't. Um, and I'm sure if you go watch my review, I said very good things about the baby on board sign. And I'm sure there's other small examples of them putting small fun things and Easter eggs in sets. And that's always a great fun thing. Um, 
Now, when we get into like the issue of accuracy, a lot of people will go and say, well, it's for kids or it's not gonna be perfectly accurate, but there's there's like a level to it, obviously. But like, if you look at a set like the AAT Canon, that's obviously wrong. They've had it right for three times in the past as far as the scaling goes, and they have it wrong the fourth. It just is what it is, and that's inaccurate, and that's like an inaccurate feature, but I don't know if you're considering that in the same vein as something like a baby on board sign, because obviously those are two very different things and how they affect the way a set looks and how it like actually feels right one is fun one is wrong <laughs> i don't know that's just kind of how i feel about it um but i was actually thinking about this a lot lately and it really got me upset again because <laughs> i'll never get over this one like i was just looking at some of the harry potter sets because i was going through and selling a lot of my like 2021 Harry Potter sets, cause I'm just like, I did my content on them. I'm not keeping them. I've decided I'm not gonna collect every Harry Potter set. I just can't do it, it's too much. I was looking at them and I'm like, look at all these fun details. They had like random cereal boxes that were like Harry Potter Cheerios, Harry Potter Fruit Loops, whatever. And then you go into the Chamber of Secrets where the snake is or whatever. And they've got like these really big like stone snake things with translucent green on them. And they like look really, really good really fantastic for the set, and that's a set that I really liked. I reviewed it a few years ago if you wanna watch it, whatever. Then I look at a set like the ATT, and it doesn't not frustrate me that there's no Palpatine hologram. Why can Harry Potter have all these really fun, obviously like good, accurate things, and then Lego Star Wars, and while the, the ATT is a perfect ATT model, will not argue that, but the omission of, of a fun, movie accurate detail that can let you recreate a scene that's iconic to episode three, makes no sense to anybody. It had to be a purposeful omission. I mean, they said with the crab droid, they didn't even consider it, which is just mind blowing. But like to not consider a Palpatine hologram would be pretty wild to me, even wilder than not considering a, a crab droid. So I think, I think it was a purposeful omission. We'll never find out. Tristan says, if you were starting your collection from scratch, what are the first five sets you would get? I suppose you got to pick one set that's out now. And, and let's just say you've got money. So UCS ATAT, got to have one of those. If I hadn't hitched my wagon to the Imperial shuttle like five years ago, I would tell you the ATAT is better than the Imperial shuttle. And realistically, it probably is. But I'd pick up the ATAT because it's probably the best set ever. The Imperial shuttle, it's 1A, 1B. I would go for one of the original clone battle packs, probably 2009 though. That one just has the most special place in my heart. And then I'd probably go out and grab a UCS Slave 1 and because I'm me and obviously the connection to it, the 501st battle pack from 2020. Although if we're, we're going with the theoretical like in a vacuum collector with no connection to Lego Star Wars, just like generally liking the theme, I suppose, I would probably replace the clone battle packs, both of them with like UCS Sandcrawler and maybe a UCS Republic gunship, again, vacuum where I don't hate the gunship because of what they said about it and the figures and everything. So yeah, um, that's what I would go with those five and obviously all UCS sets because UCS sets are cool. Thomas says, do you prefer to display your sets with or without minifigs? I've always been a no minifig display person. Even when I was a kid, just never put the minifigs on display really. I mean, seldomly did I like set them up there and then I would eventually take them down because I'd want to use them for something else anyway. And then they go into a big storage bucket for minifigs because that's just always how I did it. Other people do it differently, but I certainly prefer displaying them without the minifigs. I think the minifigs uh, in an ideal world in the next couple of years in my house will have their own nice setup. I have to figure out exactly how I want to do it because I want to do it year by year and then with every with like the exact number of figures that came in each set like so i'll do like the set number and then the figures from that set the set number and then the figures from that set and that'll all be 2001 right and then we'll have another box or whatever that'll be 2005 and then i'll have all the figures from 2005 and so that's my ideal world, and then I'll also have the sets on display elsewhere. Reddix Gaming says, what's the craziest LEGO rumor you heard that you didn't think would actually become a set? And I suppose we aren't there yet, it's not August, but when I heard about the mechs, what, a week or two ago, I was pretty broken up about it, and I knew I, I knew it would be trouble. I knew everyone would be very upset about it. I, I'm sure there's other crazy rumors over the years that, that I was surprised and they actually ended up coming true, but man, these mechs right now, recency bias included, are definitely near the top, if not, at the top of that list. And uh, the, the comments have been pouring in on my rumor video, it just overwhelmingly against mechs existing for Lego Star Wars. There's always gonna be people that are gonna think the opposite. I've seen your comments, thank you. There's like eight of you. It's clear that most people don't want this. Cole wants to know what the best four plus or junior set is. And I think it's gotta be the A-Wing set. The, the TIE Fighter like kind of looks like it's upside down a little bit because they put the windscreen upside down from what they do in every other TIE fighter. The ATST honestly probably isn't that bad, all things considered, except it's 35 freaking dollars. Anyway, uh, yeah, the A-Wing is the best one and I, 
I frankly don't think it's close because of the price thing on the ATST. I, I don't think any of the other ones are closer. Pavlov History says, is there still room in the 2023 lineup for a Republic gunship? Uh, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say no. There is one set that could maybe possibly still be a gunship. It's the unknown set with like 1,082 or 83 pieces. But I also think that's going to be a ghost from the Ahsoka show. So... I, I don't see a, a gunship fitting into this lineup. I mean, we'll see. It's not completely out of the question 100,000% yet. It won't be until like July 1st, probably. We'll know for sure. But um, I, I'm going to go on a limb here and say your chances are very, very low. This is like the Patriots down 28-3 to in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they ended up winning. But is a gunship really coming out this year? Probably not. Jonah says, what do you think would make the greatest Lego Star Wars poly bag of all time? Would it be something useful for army building? A cool minifig that wouldn't appear otherwise in a set? A small and accurate micro build of a bigger set like they've been doing? My hypothetical goat would be a battle droid with a stab speeder. You know, it's ironic that actually existed in like 2010 or 11 and it was available in stores. So uh, your, your goat set did exist. So did mine actually. Beautiful. Titan was like most planets. Unfortunately, unlike I believe every other normal poly bag of the era, of course, this is discounting the Brickmaster poly bags that were exclusive to the subscription service that Lego had at the time. This poly bag was the only one they didn't sell in stores. They sold the Staff Speeder. They sold the Stormtrooper with the speeder bike that you see here. That one they sold. I remember buying a bunch at Toys R Us at, in Massachusetts over the holiday one year. So you could get the Clone Wars MTT in stores. You could get the Venator poly bag in stores. I mean, all of those poly bags from the era were available in stores in America and across the world, I believe. Obviously, I wasn't there in other countries, but like uh, the V-19 Torrent, the TIE Fighter here, the Star Destroyer, I'm just looking at pictures of old poly bags now and just saying that they were available, right? But specifically this one, that is on the face, no different than any of the other ones, was never available at stores to buy it might have been in Europe, but this was certainly never available in America. This clone trooper with clone walker. It was always a set I lusted after. I never, I didn't own one until about 2020. Like I waited that long to buy one, but I always, always, always wanted it. I believe the only way you could get this was through the daily mail promotion in the United Kingdom. They sent out like a Captain Rex like cardboard thing and it came with poly bags in it. It was like this weird thing that they did at the time. I don't think they've really done anything like it since. I don't live there, so I wouldn't know for sure, but I haven't seen anything. So yeah, this is my GOAT LEGO Star Wars poly bag. This is the best one that has ever existed and will ever exist. Unfortunately, it was you could just never buy it in America. I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't end up releasing more minifigure poly bags in America for LEGO Star Wars. They've done minifigure poly bags. Like they, they did the Doctor Strange poly bag recently. Captain Rex says, so my question is, what is the best way to move LEGOs? I have a lot of them in my collection. I want to move them in the safest way possible. Thanks, love the content. So if you're paying like a moving company to move your stuff and, and you're going to be getting them put in a big truck and they're going to be driving it across the country or what, however it's being done, you're gonna need to pack a lot better than I am. You're probably gonna want some bubble wrap in there. But generally what I've been doing is I've been taking sets apart by their like big parts, or if I if they're like small enough, I just leave them all together. I'll put them in a big plastic bag basically, or multiple plastic bags, and then kind of tape them up sometimes so that it stays a little bit tight so pieces don't fall off. Or if pieces do fall off, I still have them contained in the same bag and I know they're that set because if I just dump a bunch of sets into a box, pieces fall off. Now I don't know where they go or it's that they go to. That's a problem. So I, I would suggest doing it something like this, especially if you are moving your stuff on your own. Like I'm going to be driving a lot of my stuff back and forth, back and forth over time. And uh, because of that, I know that I can drive in a way that's going to be suitable uh, for Lego sets on the road and it will be okay. And even if it does break, it's fixable. You know, it's, it's set up that it's okay to fail. But uh, yeah, I think something that the system I've kind of got going is going to be good for you. Although Again, if you're not personally moving your stuff so that you won't be taking the utmost care in it by like picking it up carefully, not turning it over, all these sorts of things that normal people would do if they if they don't care about the stuff, definitely use a lot of bubble wrap and be really careful with it. But otherwise, you can you can be a little loose with it like I have been. Bazin says, what do you think the May 4th promotional set is going to be this year? I really hope they stick with what they did last year with like a nice build and a nice exclusive minifigure that we wouldn't get otherwise. And I really hope that thing is from the Clone Wars but we all know it's gonna be from Return of the Jedi. Also, there, like, I don't know what it is. I have no inside information, but we all know it's gonna be Return of the Jedi. Both will be cool. Like, like they're gonna make a good promo if they do, if they just stick with what they did last year, it can't be bad. It just might not be the thing you want. Zachary says, what will you miss most about living in your parents' house and your old room? 
I think at the very top of my list is not having to do the dishes. I'm definitely going to miss not doing the dishes. So uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been Ask Him Episode 256. If you have a question you want to answer on next week's episode, leave it down in the comment section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.